members on our YouTube channel. This is Rhonda Benton, Family um, Engagement Coordinator for Toombs County School System, and this is our Community Spotlight for the week. This is, I'm sitting here chatting with Paige Williamson. Glad to have you, Paige. Thank you. And she is with Family Connections, and you talk about a mover or shaker in our community <laughs> to help our students and our families, this, you're looking at her. So, um, we just wanted to interview her and kind of let her um, educate us and learn about what Family Connections has done for our kids in the past and present and what's in the future, what it looks like. First of all, Paige, glad to have you. Thank you. And would you explain to our audience, in case they've not heard of Family Connections before, exactly what is your agency and what yes. you do? Yes, okay, so thank you for having me. I love Toombs County Schools. I work with both school systems, but I love you guys so much. I actually live in Lyons, and so I've been involved in the school system for a very long time. Um, prior to being the Family Connection Director, I was the 21st Century After School Coordinator at Toombs County Middle School for five or six years, so it's good to be it's, here too. It's home, she's, she's home, she's family. That's right, that's right. So Family Connection, uh, we began in the state of Georgia 29 years ago, roughly under Doc, uh, Governor Zell Miller, and it, it was a pilot program, so it wasn't in every county, it was just kind of a test program. Um, and the purpose um, of our existence is really to link families and children with resources in the community so that services are more streamlined. Um, the other kind of overarching goal that has continued to be our main mission um, is to identify service gaps in the community. So we still identify service gaps in the community and um, if we can't implement a program or service then we try and coordinate that with our partners. And so let me explain for a moment who our partners are. If you have a vested interest in children and families in Toombs County then you can be a part of our collaborative. We're always looking for parents that want to be involved and um, help us with decision making in terms of where we're going from year to year. Um, so Family Connection in the state has been around for 29 years and then here in Toombs County and there's a, a collaborative in every county in the state of Georgia. We've been around for at least 18. So I've been Family Connection Director for the last six years and we have um, we have centered our work for the last 10 years around school success. So if you go into another county in the state of Georgia, they may be doing something totally different, but it is still all about the well-being of families and children. So we are one of the, and this is really exciting, it's one of my favorite things to say is, we are one of the only state agencies where um, the decision making still lies in local, in the local community. Nobody knows our community better than we do. Amen. And so it's really important for us that we get as many people involved in what we're doing from as many different sectors mm -hmm. um, from the community as we can. That's great. Yes. yes. Know yes. what's going on here exactly. That's right. So, so I, I would love to say just kind of to share our plan uh -huh. briefly and then um, a little bit about our services and okay. programs. All right. So I said we've our, our work has centered around school and school age kids and making sure that kids are successful. Um, that has really been our focus for a very long time. We had the 21st Century After School Program that was in partnership with the school system. It was a beautiful partnership. Yes, it was. Unfortunately, came to an end after we didn't receive the federal funding a year ago, and then the school system supported our efforts to sustain the program for an additional year, which kudos to school admin and leadership because that was a really, really big deal. 
Uh, I can't tell you honestly what a big deal that is. It was, we were um, spotlight, spotlighted all around the state of Georgia because of the partnerships that we had with our school systems last year when the funding did go away. And so thank you to County Schools for that. Um, so a couple of the in indicators that we focused on in the last several years is that third grade reading. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk a minute um, in a minute about what we've done around that grade level reading. Um, teen pregnancy, because we are high in teen pregnancy, no one wants to talk about it, but we are. Um, and then um, children that are, or students that are not in school and not working. And so we've done a lot of work with the alternative schools, more as a prevention or prevention efforts than anything else. Um, so really literacy and teen pregnancy. Um, and then we also do things like the Backpack Buddies program and the mentoring program and um, focus on you know, meeting the child where they are and providing some supports for the children um, emotionally, socially, and then of course with literacy as well. So high school graduation rate, as y'all know, has been on a steady increase um, since, I want to say 2012. It was in Toombs County at like 69%. It was similar in, uh, in Vidalia, and the schools have made really great strides in the last, over the last several years. And it was in the 90s this year. Mm -hmm. It was like a 95%, I want to say. Don't quote me on that. But I think <laughs> it was 95% of the students um, from the school year. I don't know about the data, honestly, for this last school year. It's been crazy, has it not? Uh-huh, it um, has. But the year before, it, there was definitely an increase. We're climbing that ladder yes. every year. That's, That's fantastic. Right. Yeah, yeah. So those are kind of the indicators that we look at. And then after we choose the indicators, and we base that on our county data. So um, we get that from a place called Kids Count. And Kids Count um, gets that information from DOE and from other sources, maybe the health department. And then we sometimes create our own um, indicators and track our own data mm -hmm. um, in our community. So that's another thing that we highly value is tracking what we're doing yes. and seeing if it makes a difference. Yes. Yes. You know? yes. I've just sent home to a lot of our um, schools a family, a parent feedback form and had great response. Thank you parents. Had Good. great. I'm working on collecting that data now and anxious to get us going in the right direction. So, That's awesome. But that data is important, mm -hmm. very yeah. important, and it helps everyone. Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to put a little plug in here for the census because that's yes. just a perfect segue there. So data is really important, and when we write grants, when we try to get money for, let's just say, for example, for after-school programs, we need proper data. And one of the tools that we use the most probably is our census information. If you have not filled out your census, we have until the September the 30th to do that. It, it is super quick. We can provide a link yes. maybe. We'll provide a link um, so that you guys can just easily touch that at the end of this segment and go on. It takes practically no time. And that is a huge way that you and your family can engage in our community and really make a difference in your child's future and your future opportunities as a parent as well. Yes. 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 Please, please. If you've not filled out the census, it is great. It will help everyone. Yes, it will. So when big businesses come to town, they look at our population. When um, grocery stores come to town, they look at our population to see if it can sustain business. Um, when grant funders um, look at our applications for different programs, they look at our population because there are stipulations when it comes to giving money um, from the state and from the federal government. It is huge, just in ways that you would never even think 
Um, and what you report is 100% confidential. Um, so there's no repercussions to anything that you report. Um, you can be, again, totally confidential. So yes. do that. If, if not for you and you don't see the big picture, do it for your children because I promise you directly or indirectly in the next several years, you will feel the effects of that action or inaction that you take today. Yes. 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 So let me talk just for a moment. I could talk all day, <laughs> especially to Ms. Benton, um, but some of the programs that we partnered with Toombs County on um, in the last several years, um, I, I talked a, a good bit about our after school programs and what a beautiful partnership that was. We're hoping that one day in the future we'll be able to provide some after school programming again. Um, it's, it's not something that we've forgotten about because we know that those 11 years, um, not only did that academic progress happen, but relationships were built yes. and networking um, occurred. And many of our volunteers and our staff actually went on to go to school for teaching. And our children graduated and we were able to hire um, some teachers in the afternoons mm -hmm. to supplement their income and so it was it was a really really big deal at our peak we were serving 150 kids um, within the Toombs County school system so we had a great team fantastic. we had a great partnership and it's not something that um, ended without a lot of emotion <laughs> from the school system and um, from us. And so we, we want to do that again and we're looking for opportunities. So that's one thing um, that we've been really invested in. We also have a, a common um, goal to increase those third grade literacy scores. And yes. I know you've heard it from Ms. Benton um, and from you know administrators at your child's school, but Literacy is so important, and especially that third grade mark, because it is the year where kids go from learning to read to reading to learn. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Learning to read to reading to learn. learn. And so, you know, there are so many doors that open and really so many that close, dependent on whether a child um, has that literacy um, or is at the proficient level um, by the end of third grade. It's the mark that the prison system looks at to determine how many prisons they need to have yeah. available um, by in the future. In they the plan future. ahead. That's right. By looking at that data yeah. about third grade reading level. Yes, and so that's why it's extremely important that we start reading to our kids it's the most important thing that we can do, I think, and, and most effective thing that we can do with that zero to five population is read to them, talk to them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a concern that we've had with the masks because, you know, a child really uses the facial expressions to teach them. It's Adults that, too. Adults too. too. Yeah, I, I, I like to see the lips moving. That's right. Mm -hmm. So there, you know, there are challenges for sure right now mm -hmm. in, in the state of affairs, you know, and where we are. But I will say, as parents, that that is the best thing that you can do is read to your child. And if your li literacy is not where you would want it to be, you can still point out pictures. Mm -hmm. You can talk to your kids about what's happening in the story and that will help them that will improve that third grade reading being in school is huge one of the things we did several years ago um, and the money ran out of course it's all about funding but there for a while we were partnering with the school to um, provide some treats um, and incentives for kids who had perfect attendance um, or had yeah, i think we did it by the semester um, so that's, that's something that we really look at when we think about um, how a child is doing in the third grade literacy, uh -huh. that literacy component. So we also do literacy nights. Yes. We have done those in the past, and we may have to get creative this year because of COVID-19. 
Um, but we may even look at doing like a virtual. I was going to say that word, virtual. Yeah, we may do that. Um, this that would is be just great. the land that we're living in, and we've got to roll with it or we'll get left behind. And I think of the drive through. We could do yeah. something possibly with the drive through. That's right. That's at right. At the schools. Yeah, so there are ways for us to engage and connect with you without, you know, putting you and your family in danger and just being mindful of where we are. Um, we also provide um, the Backpack Buddies program for um, Lions Upper and the Lions Primary School. Now, this is amazing because we're in our sixth year there. Yes. And um, the former superintendent, Dr. Corley, um, we had a conversation a long time ago, and she just, we were talking about the needs of the children, and um, our, there are 37% of our children in Toombs County are in poverty, 37%. And um, so we know that food stability can be an issue sometimes, and you know, the weekend bags of food that we give out, it helps a little bit, right? And then this year, we're going to rely on um, the counselors again to work with us to identify those children that are most in need. We wish we could do it for all Everybody. the children, but most in need. And then um, use that program not only to provide food, but also books more mm -hmm. often this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and things like that. Opportunities for parents, like little activities for um, parents and children to do together at home. Um, because we, we more than likely will not be able to go into the school system in the way that we have in the past yeah. you know we're playing it um day by day so that's a really a big one too we also have the Toombs county mentoring program um that is on hold right now we're trying to figure out an optimal way of um allowing mentors to still connect with their Some kids students. yeah and so more will be revealed there yeah and, and i wanted yeah. to mention just because this past, before COVID came in, mm -hmm. Team Mays. Yes. Will you explain Team Mays? Yes. yes. So Team Mays, I had to flip around because that was, I think that's the only thing that I haven't talked about. Oh, yeah. Um, Team Mays is an incredible opportunity for eighth grade students in our county to learn about negative consequences to behavior. And I'd just like to put a plug in here, parents and grandparents. If you've never, they open this up to the public mm -hmm. the night before they have the eighth graders come into this um, event. Mm -hmm. If you've not been, please go. Let, this past spring was my first time helping with this event. And it was an eye opener, and I was thinking, when I was in way back when, <laughs> if I could have had an event like this, it was an eye opener. It yeah. really, really, our teenagers need this yeah. to see this. But I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. <laughs> no, I love that feedback. You know, the teammates. So the teammates is like a life size um, event where children learn about these consequences. And we begin, I'm gonna give you just a quick run through. We begin with a party scene and all the kids get really excited because it sounds fun. And you know, all the kids that are actors are having a great time. And then um, the cops bust in. And when the cops bust in, there are consequences and children that are 16, their brains aren't developed. They, they do some, some things that lead to very negative um, results. And then the rest of the time um, when the kids come through and they come in and rotate in groups, boys with boys, girls with girls, um, they rotate through these stations and they learn about the different um, topics that we've talked about or they've seen portrayed in that, in the rest the scene skit. and in the skit. And so we have like social behavior. How are you portraying yourself online, right? Because what you're portraying is reality for people that see it. So what are you sharing? Are you oversharing? And we talk about the risks of oversharing. Um, there are some kids that um, chose to engage in drug and alcohol use and we actually bring in a group that have some testimony, personal testimony that they share 
um, with children and an encouragement for them as well. Um, we have a pregnancy clinic um, and an STD clinic. And I know that those are sensitive topics. Listen, I, my mom was born in um, 1946 and those topics were very off limits. Um, but we're we're in a different age. I mean, all you have to do is turn on the TV, yes. and kids see way more than and they we do. Would, yes, and, and what we, we were exposed to at that age. Absolutely, it's mm -hmm. just a different world. And so we can have. We've got two choices. One, we can bury our heads, which is really comfortable sometimes. I'm not going to lie. It's really nice to just not pretend it's not there. Right. And two, we can educate. And so I like that the love that the schools allow us to come in, and actually the kids come on to um, into a setting where they're bussed over, so it's kind of like a field trip, and then Family Connection and DPH and other partners put it on. Um, but we're able to say, okay, did you see this in the skit? So this is what can happen when and if you make this choice. It's not a sitting down and lecturing children about what they, you know, should do and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and I will say on the um, teen pregnancy and, and STDs, we get um, East Georgia Health Clinic to help us with that. They do an amazing job in the health department. And we educate. So this is what can happen. So it's just a really great opportunity. We've got several other um, events and then, or stations, and then at the very end, um, we always have like a, a mock graduation, the superintendent, the high school uh, principal speaks, and then we have a special guest. Special guest talks about, um, a, they tell their story, and it's incredibly impactful and moving. It's real life stuff. Very style. motivational and makes yes. the kids think. It does. So we get to touch on all of those indicators that I talked about earlier. Um, and then, of course, at the end, we put the plug in for, you know, graduating from high school. Um, we do collect data on that. And, and that is as much for the parents, for you guys, as it is for the children that week. So yeah, this year we have some additional funding that has come in through one of our grant partners. Um, it is an opiate grant, um, opiate prevention yes. through HRSA. And we have, we're really excited about the opportunity to jazz it up and make it even bigger and better um, than it has been in the past. The, other thing that I wanted to say, and then I'll be done. But I don't think I'll like I could, You could talk all day and I could listen all day. So you're good. I'm enjoying and learning as we are Good, here. good. So the school got an L4GA grant. Yes, they did. Okay, so if you don't, if you're not in the grant world, that's okay. Um, grants are um, money that has been set aside and delegated to very specific issues. And grants can be funded, it can be on the local level from Lowe's or Walmart or someplace like Altamaha EMC, um, smaller grants to really large federal grants. And so the L4GA was um, State of Georgia grant? Yes. Yeah. And so we're really excited. And one of the things that we've recently done is we partnered with Toombs County. Um, there was some money set aside in the grant for engaging that zero to five population in our county. And we talked about this before, you know, the, the, the reason that we're trying to get that population and the parents engaged is because we know the importance of brain development at that age and how it is an indicator um, of how the child is going to progress in school when academically. They, to, they get to school. That's right. So when we can engage them, when we can get them in pre-K pre and quality rated um, programs, then that's what we want to do. So the school came and said, hey, will Family Connection partner with us on this? And so um, they have, you guys have set aside some money to provide um, first reader subscriptions to many, many, many children in our community.
And so we have to talk details on that, but we will, and um, and that that may be something that you guys can tap into um, yes. as parents with kids that already have kids in the school system. So we'll certainly let y'all know about that. We'll be communicating, and I'll be yeah. sure to get information out to you as family engagement coordinator. That is fantastic. Yes. And they mail them. Is that I don't want to jump yes. in. They're mailed mm -hmm. to they will the be home. mailed to the homes. Mm -hmm. The books. Yes. And so that would be great. One of the things that um, the Get Georgia Reading campaign has has the, the, has talked about um, is the importance of access to books. Um, so in addition to the importance of reading to your child, the kids need to have access, right? And so that's one of the things that we've done in the past several years is we've implemented um, a program with the mini libraries right and we're actually looking for um, since the rec department isn't up and running right now in mm -hmm. Lyons there is um, a mini library over there but I may shift it somewhere in the community we'll keep you guys posted and that's basically just an opportunity for you to go and get a book it's free take two we don't care just don't take all of them leave some for somebody else but we really want you guys to get those and enjoy them and read to your child so yes. access to books is so important and i don't know the statistic but it was pretty astounding that um, the sample group that they tested um, the data came back and said that so many children lived in homes where there was no reading material so that's, mm. that's the goal there is to, is to get the books in the home. That's right. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah. Older brother and sister can be reading to them also. Yes. And they can be practicing. Huge. That's yes. huge. Yes. Not only parents, but mm -hmm. older siblings also. Yeah. Well, Paige, thank you <laughs> so much for joining us. Yeah. And as you can tell, she is a mover and shaker. Yeah. She loves this community and this community loves her. If you have any questions or you are interested in joining her um, Family Connections Collaborative, yeah. uh, you're welcome to contact me at the board office, um, and I'll be sure. She and I talk a lot, yeah. and we try to get on projects and work together to help our kids succeed in this uh, community, and we just say thank you for this time. Hope you enjoyed this community spotlight. And once again, Paige, thank you thank for you. all you do for our Tunes County students. God bless. God bless. Mm -hmm.